The cross product is going to be very useful for us when we get into calculus and into linear algebra later on. You may be wondering, what is the cross product? Why do we take the cross product? Why are we even interested in it? What does it even mean to do that? Um, so the cross product is very, is very interesting, and it's a very kind of concise way of finding a vector that is orthogonal or normal or perpendicular, all kind of mean the same thing, to the given two vectors. So say you're given two vectors in R3 here, A and B, where A has three components, A1, A2, A3, and B has three components, B1, B2, and B3. We know that um, we can use the dot product, for example, to find the angle between uh, A and B, which is much easier than using the cross product, but we can also use the cross product to find the angle between A and B. So you can think here that A and B are kind of on some plane. A and B define some plane in R3. So if you can imagine here, just, just as if you have two points in R2, they define a line, uh, in R, they define a line in R2. If we have two vectors in R3 that are not linearly dependent, which means they're not on the same line here, uh, then it, we have defined a plane in R3. So if you can imagine A and B kind of laying on coplanar on some plane in R3, we have a vector, we have an angle between these two vectors, which we can define as the inverse sign or the arc sign of the, the magnitude of A cross B all over the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. So what are we doing when we're taking A cross B? So when we're taking A cross B, we're really finding some vector that's orthogonal to the given two vectors, which means that it's kind of poking out of this plane here at an exactly a right angle. So if you can imagine we have some kind of, if the plane, if you're looking at the plane here, if you're looking kind of into the plane, you're looking at it just like this, as if you're holding a CD and it's just kind of like in front of your face like this, we're finding a vector that kind of points straight up at a right angle. So this is going to be A cross B, a resultant vector that's Per, that's perfectly a right angle with the, with the plane that these two vectors are on, is going to be A cross B. And so the resultant quantity we get is going to be a vector, not a scalar. So it's important to note that the dot product resultant quantity will be a scalar, or so just some number. The resultant quantity of the, of the cross product is going to be a vector, and that vector is going to be orthogonal to the given two vectors. So you can use this formula, theta is equal to sine inverse of all this business here, but it's much, much easier to just use a dot product formula, which is just the same thing here. You'd have theta is equal to the arc cosine of a dot b over magnitude of a times magnitude of b. It's much more advisable to use that formula over this formula because finding the cross product, as we'll see, is kind of a hassle. It takes much more time than finding the dot product does. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of what geometrically it means to take the cross product of two vectors, we can define here the cross product of A and B as follows. So we have a determinant of this matrix. We have in the top row, I, J, and K. And if you're wondering, okay, I, I don't remember what that is. So I, J, and K are just the unit vectors in R3. So I would just be the unit vector in the x direction here. So we have I, J would be the unit vector, so the, just the vector of, of magnitude one. J would be the unit vector in the y direction, and K would be the unit vector in the uh, z direction. So we're just putting the, these as placeholders here in the, in the top row. So we have i, j, and k in the top row, a1, a2, a3 in the second row, and b1, b2, b3 in the third row here. So then, assuming that you already know how to, to take a determinant, which you will know how to, need to know how to take a determinant in order to calculate the cross product, you would just go ahead and use the cofactor expansion or whatever you want to do here to find the determinant of this matrix, and you're going to get as a result something in terms of i, j, and k. The coefficients of i, j, and k are just going to be the coefficients of your vector here. So you get some kind of thing here where we have, uh, for example, c1, c2, c3, where c is equal to a cross b. So that's what we're doing when we're taking the cross product here. Uh, so I would always memorize this uh, matrix instead of memorizing, because you could memorize, okay, a2 times b3 times i times this times that. It's much easier to just memorize the matrix and eliminates any confusion along the way as you can very very much so visually see what, what you're doing when you're taking the cross product, when you set up the matrix like that. So there's a couple products of uh, the cross product that are very, in, there are properties of the cross product that are very important to know. And possibly the most important is the anti-commutativity property, which means that instead of having, you know, for example, a dot b is equal to b dot a, very nice, kind of symmetric, there we have the opposite here, where we have a cross b is equal to negative b cross a, or negative quantity b cross a here. 
So this is very important because we can't just arbitrarily flip around things like we can in the dot product because that would be flipping rows here and inverting our signs in the final answer. So it's important to take the, to take the cross product in the order in which the vectors are presented. Uh, the next property is going to be scalar multiplication when we have the same as the dot product here. So when we have some scalar C in R, so some kind of real number C, uh, we have C times quantity A cross B is going to be equal to either quantity C times vector A cross vector B or A cross C times vector B. So the constant just kind of distributes inside. When you have a scalar here on the outside, it distributes inside when you're doing the cross product, which is a very nice property. And finally, here we have the distributive property, just the same as when we have the dot product is distributive, the cross product is also distributive. So if you have vector A cross so the sum of some two vectors here, B and C, so A cross quantity B plus C, that would be equal to just if we distribute over the A here and the A here, it would be equal to A cross B plus A cross C. So that's the distributive property. So again, the cross product is very useful to know for when we get to linear algebra and calculus, and it's possibly uh, the most significant because of the geometric interpretation of the cross product, the thing that it allows us to find this vector that's perpendicular orthogonal to the two given vectors in R3. So, and once again, we have this formula here, but just use the dot product formula if at all possible. If you forget the dot product formula, you can use this, but definitely go for the dot product formula first. But those are some basic properties of the cross product. To return to the vector menu, click here. To see more additional practice problems worked out, you can click here. So to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click this link here. To visit our website, click here. And finally, to return to the main menu, click this link here. And remember, if you haven't already done so, you can purchase the pre-calculus blueprint by clicking on the link in the description of this video. Remember, it's only $1.95. Thank you for watching.